Welcome. My name is Naftali Jimmy Bruce. They call me Cheetah. And welcome to this Job Seeker Home Training. It's soft skills help for you who know how to maybe get a job, but don't know how to keep a job. This won't take long and it'll help you for the rest of your life. So let's get going without further ado. Let's go to the next slide. Here's my introduction. My company is called Image Productions. Image stands for intelligence, moderation, integrity, and justice. Image Productions. And we speak many languages here. I can say to you, hello, hola, privet, bonjour, shalom and probably a few more. Let's go to the next slide. This slide is about manners. So when you're on the job, mind your manners. You don't have to bow like the gentleman over here, over there, you don't have to bow, but <laughs> when you're on the job, mind your manners. Let's click through it. There was a certain code of ethics that everybody always follows at work, in the workplace. For example, when you ask for something, it's nice to say, please. Please, may I have something? Please, can I get one of those? Don't go, can I get this? No. Say, may I, you know, frame it right. Say, thank you when you receive something. Say, I'm sorry if I messed up. Or, my bad, man, my bad. Or, <laughs> excuse me, if you interrupt someone or, even in your phone eth ethic, you know, your phone etiquette, if you have a, a customer service job, you're going to want to use all of these things to the max. But excuse me is a big one. Or izvenitya, as they say in Russian. Put, put your phone on mute. I don't know why I said that, but I know Russian uh, a little bit. Uh, put your phone on mute. Take out your earbuds because nobody wants to talk to you and you got stuff stuck in your ear and you listen to iPod radio, radio, radio. Uh, you're judged by your actions words and appearance, period. Let's go to the next slide, okay? The second dot is on, it's red and I'm recording. This slide is about, as we bounce, customer relations and, I don't wanna show you that finger, teamwork, teamwork. How many times, I'm gonna go for the bottom up, how many times have you heard the expression, there's no I in team, man? Well, I've heard it too many times. Of course there's no I in team. <laughs> I know it's a euphemism. Everybody achieves more together. T-E-A-M. Together, everyone achieves more. And with that goes customer relations, to be courteous, friendly, helpful, reliable, efficient, or efficiency, not the apartment. I mean, doing what's assigned to you in the allotted time or even faster, which is better service and better quality, and always leave them with a smile. Ching, cheese. We move on. And the red dot is on again. This one is very serious. It's uh, a slide about affirmative action, equal employment opportunity. Easy for me to say. Dr. King over here. We just uh, had an anniversary of his assassination. If you don't know what I'm talking about, time to hit the history books again. Equal employment opportunity. Let me read the fine print for you. This is something that this man died for and many others. It's an active effort to improve the employment or educational opportunities of members of minority groups and women, you know, blacks, Hispanics, minority groups, traditional ones in this country, the United States of America. It sought to achieve a multicultural staff through affirmative actions, what it was called. Also a similar effort to promote the rights or progress of other disadvantaged persons. It's not only the law, it's a principle 
of many of the staffing companies and agencies that you might get a job from. So, you know, fall in line with all that. Fill out your EEO statement. Period. Bow to Dr. King. Serious. Next. Oh, yeah, we wanted to emphasize that, by the way, just for effect. See? Moving right along. In the same vein is a cultural diversity policy. That's right. The diversity policy of companies is to create a workplace where the culture of acceptance, tolerance, innovation, which increases the collectives, everybody working there's knowledge and abilities and skills and makes the place a better, better, better place for people to patronize, for the company to market, and for you to work. Culture encompasses ethnicity, beliefs, traditions, diversity, nation is people, which is all part of the human whole experience. I'm hiding. Peekaboo. Next. And now we come to timing. Timing, as in your hours of work. Let's watch. Timing, read along. Commuting, telecommuting, which is fun when you do something from home. Shift work. You know, you may do the midnight shift, like midnight to six. You might do the midday shift, like 10 to four or something. And there's all kinds of different shifts as they break up the clock. Flex time is flexible time. I love flexible time. Uh, hourly work is when you get paid by the hour. Like the minimum wage, what is it, $8 an hour now? Much too low here. Um, minimum wage in America should be like 14 at least, in my opinion. Um, all this has to do with getting to work on time and getting enough rest and getting enough sleep, which is individual for all of us. Nobody's the same. but we all have a minimum. Get enough sleep so that you can function, get to work on time. Yes, there's not enough hours in the day, as it says right there, but be on time. Endeavor to be on time or early. Who knows? Some days you might get to leave early. Let's go to the next slide. Woohoo! <laughs> I like that. Which always comes to something else called the no show, no call rule. I had first-hand experience with this when I was a manager in New York City at a uh, copier company. I ascended to management and the manager let me, the owner let me interview people and hire. Uh, I hired a young lady, very efficient, looked very cute, dressed well for work. Come in the next day. She didn't. She didn't show up. She didn't call. She came in two days later, thought she still had a job. Yet. She was gone. So this is ironclad. If you can't come to work, even if it's your first day and something comes up, call your boss, your new boss, call your agency that got you the job, call somebody so you still have a job, you know? Uh, otherwise, you're probably fired by now because most companies, as it says here, have a no call, no show policy. It could be listed as voluntary quit. And you don't get unemployment for that. So you must, 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 must always call your staffing agency and, you, and who you're working for early, at least before your shift. Don't wait till, you know, unless you're stuck on the, um, you know, F train somewhere in the underground. Um, and, you know, a lot of people will be in the same boat or train car. No exceptions. This is for your own good. Can we do a next slide? Oh, I just want to emphasize as it gets big, no call. Okay, we continue. Your personal appearance as an employee. Some pl places have you wear a uniform, and we'll get to that in a minute. Other places let you come in professional or business casual, unless you're working digging ditches or something. If you're in an office, you should be wearing office type attire. 
wear a tie. Like me. Not tie like Jimmy B. Um, <laughs> you know, you got to keep your tire neat and clean as much as possible. Lean towards, lean, as I lean in, lean towards <laughs> professional rather than casual, especially if you work in an office environment, okay? Which comes to and dovetails on company uniform policies. If you're at a company that has a uniform, then your company dress, look, dress code will outline how the employee is dressed at work or how you are dressed at work. Appearance matters when representing a company in front of clients and visitors. So remember, you know, your employee appearance can create a positive or negative impression that reflects upon the company culture. Okay? So you got to be neat, clean, well-groomed, and uh, ironed clothes, you know, uh, clothes that are typical in workouts and indoor activities are not allowed. And now you get the picture. Get the picture? See, it's right there. Where? Yeah. yeah. See that? Right there. <laughs> this is pointer I could use, but I don't know how to use it. So, we'll move on. Stuff like that. That is so cool. Accidents do happen on the job. Yes, indeed. So, be careful. Extra careful with yourself in order to keep them at a minimum. If you work in a kitchen, Adhere to the uh, knife and utensil rules. Don't be bouncing around with a knife. Govern yourself accordingly by getting enough rest so you're, you're, you're sharp as a knife and not clumsy or careless and get cut with one like I did on my finger. Uh, so if you get hurt in a job assign assignment, you must let your good staffing people know immediately by phone, email, or text. And we'll hold it right there until we get to the next slide. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Performance, that was a performance. Appraisals, appraisals, appraisals. That was echo. A performance appraisals are like when people try to give you grades on things. That's an appraisal. Are you honest? Are you productive? Do you cooperate? Is the quality of your work good? You have technical skills. Do you work consistently with enthusiasm, a good attitude, take the initiative? How are your working relations with your coworkers? Are you creative, like me? Are you punctual, which means on time? And uh, are you dependable? Do you communicate well? And how's that attendance again? That goes back to punctuality, okay? And then they'll give you a grade with a checkbox, okay? We move on. That slide just slid right on in, and it's all about conflict of interest. This is pretty serious. Like bribes. Let's break it down. Conflict of interest basically is a bribe, but it's dressed up in other um, neat language. For example, a gift, a gratuity, and entertainment like tickets. If it's not uh, something that's uh, encouraged in your line of work like in show business it's kind of okay but if somebody offers you tickets in order not to do your job right then there's a conflict of interest basically so any responsible person who represents a company accepting gifts or other favors um in like with somebody you're seeking business with or is a competitor uh of the organization you work for you know, you're kind of on the line of conflict of interest. Some people will make you sign papers to this effect when you sign on. Also non-compete things, you know? So be aware and don't do that. Um, this does not exclude or preclude the acceptance of idols of nominal insignificant value or entertainment or nominal insignificant value related to any particular transaction. That's kind of legalese. Basically, it's about ethics versus value versus your integrity. So don't compromise yourself by taking money not to do your job right. Okay? Don't do it. Bye-bye. Immigration law compliance. Big topic in the news these days. Immigration law. Well, you know, if you watch the news, you know it's a hot-button issue. 
federal immigration law requires that the employers verify all new employees that can legally work in this country, the United States. There's a, uh, a United States uh, compliance form, I-9, where you have to like give like a driver's license or a passport and two other things, social security card that say who you are, who you are, and that proves it, and so that you're legally bound to work in the United States, okay? So make sure to do that. An unexpired passport, by the way, and I know this, is the single best document if you have one, okay? The unexpired passport. See, I used the pen. Next. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just move on like we're supposed to. Surviving jury duty. You might be sort of with a jury duty summons or something's called witness duty. In general, for an employee to be excused from that, in other words, not to go, um, you must submit a copy of the summons to your immediate boss very soon after you get it. Don't be waiting, trying to concoct a story. And in the case of jury duty, often it's a completed proof of service you must uh, must be submitted at the end of the duty. Some, some of your bosses will pay you while you're at jury duty, because they only pay you like 25 cents, I heard. I don't know. Maybe maybe a dollar a day. So it's at the, your employer's discretion whether to pay your salary or provide benefits during a period of jury duty. And that's just a ripple in the pond. This one, our next slide, is, is about the drug and alcohol-free workplace policies. You might see a sign like this one up here. See a sign right there? You might see a sign like that, okay? And uh, you might be able to bounce out of there if you don't obey that sign. So no illegal drugs, no drinking on the job, basically what it says, no selling drugs on the job, no distributing, no trying to convey and be, you know, underhanded, no getting intoxicated, that is drunk. In any amount, in any manner, strictly prohibited. Even prescription drugs and opiates that they talk about nowadays, don't do it. Any violation will result in an adverse employment action. You know it's called, you're fired. And you might be arrested. They might dime you out to the authorities. So don't do it. No, no, no. And one more. This one is... Ooh, ooh. Something like, but not like the conflict of interest, but this is basically about soliciting. Some people don't want anybody coming there trying to sell their employees anything or no insurance or even the Jehovah's Witnesses. So no soliciting in any manner. Don't be requesting money. You can't let nobody in that just might start selling you guys or whatever, encyclopedias or internet, whatever. Um, you don't want that to happen. Your boss doesn't want that to happen. So if you see a no soliciting sign, and you work there, don't let people in who want to uh, have you give to a charity or politics or, or sign a petition, or buy some magazines, and no salespeople unless you're selling what we sell in this office, buddy, move on. And that's that one about solicitation. Any questions so far? Save them till the end. Write them below in the notes, <laughs> in the comment section. Okay, distribution refers to disseminating literature or material for commercial or political purposes. That all is comes under the heading of solicitations. Don't do it. Time for a few more. The Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA. What's that mean? I'll tell you. It means that uh, basically businesses cannot discriminate and have to make accommodations for people with disabilities or handicaps. Like uh, if you can't walk, if you have a wheelchair, they have to put in these ramps. That's why you see ramps a lot of places over the last say 20 years or so. Uh, legislation passed in 1990 prohibits discrimination against people with disabilities. Under this act, person with disabled is, um, you know, has to be helped. Uh, it's illegal in employment, transportation, public accommodations, communications, and government activities. Got it? 
All right. So private employers, state governments, local governments, employment agencies, labor unions, no discrimination against the disabled or somebody with a handicap. And some of the examples of handicaps, I will show you. This one is about, you know, mental. This is obvious, it's the wheelchair. And uh, this one, somebody who's blind, sees a cane. And this is signing for people who are hearing impaired or deaf, as they say, okay? And that's that one. Okay. Now, I'll go back. Termination of employment, always fun to talk about. <laughs> In other words, when you get fired, Ooh, fired. I'll come back around here. Huh? Get my gun. No. <laughs> anyway, that's what on TV. That's what they do. You're fired. It's the first line of defense when you get fired is to let your staffing agency know if you're hired by an agency. Okay. Um, they're your first line of defense. If you're discontent when you start and you got hired by an agency or an agent or some kind of recommendation, let them know quickly. Um, also known as being discharged or you resigning, voluntary quit, we just went through that, retirement, misconduct, poor performance, insubordination, damaging company property, all these ways that you can get fired, okay? Uh, drug and alcohol possession at work, um, falsifying or lying, information, stealing, taking too many days off. All will get you canned. Don't do it. Next. Ah, yes. Good old SH. Sexual harassment. Big thing in the news this year. A lot of people got dimed out. Whatever you think about it, don't do it. Making friends on the job and flirting and sexual harassment is a very fine line. Okay, you see this picture here? Where's my little highlight thing? See this picture here? I highlight in red because right here is the questionable place. Naughty, naughty. Look at her. What you doing talking to me and putting your hand like that, mister? So it's an unwelcome sexual advance. It says here, request for a sexual favor in order to keep a job or other ver verbal or physical contact of sexual nature, you know, is sexual harassment. Either obvious or suggested, you know, you make a little un double entendre joke sometimes now, people don't get it. So if you say like to somebody that they can have a job if they maybe will do something, that's not a big thing. And if you get asked to do that, you're supposed to dime them out nowadays. A lot of people don't. It's like it's a judgment call on you, but nobody should really do that. Submission to or rejection of such conduct by an individual is used as a basis for employment decisions after affecting such individuals. So, you know, kind of like if you really give in to that, then afterwards, you're, that dude owns you, ladies. You know, and if he touches you, slap that hand. Shoot, what's wrong with you, mister? You crazy? Get off me. Get loud. <laughs> I mean, really, people get meek and everything. No, no, embarrass them. They won't do it again. Next, we have the smartphone policy. We go right from one thing and get out of that mess. Smartphone policy is basically don't be using your phone. Make a date. When you're at work and you're supposed to be working, put that phone down, take those earbuds out, use the company phone, and um, don't be using your cell phone. Okay? If you have a company phone at your desk and you're on a cell phone, it's kind of obvious you're not doing your work. Okay? Despite the great benefits, it says personal cell phones may cause problems in the workplace. Employees who use their cell phones excessively may get distracted from your work, disturb your colleagues. I had that happen. 
you know, you don't want to hear what somebody else is talking personal business while you're right next to them and they're on their cell phone. Not cool. It's inconsiderate. Uh, it might cause a security issue from inappropriate use of company issued equipment or misuse of the company's internet connection, it says. It might cause accidents when they illegally use a phone inside the company vehicle or near areas where phones are prohibited. And finally, the company may expect employees to use their cell phones prudently during working hours. Prudently means with good judgment and common sense. And if you don't want to know what common sense is, we're going to get to that really soon. Okay, I, I promise. And down the stretch we come. Just a few more of these. Then I'm going to miss you people. Classifications of employment, just in case you don't know, they fall into about maybe seven categories, including executive or management staff, the people in the ivory tower, <laughs> office staff, which are the subordinates and people who are like administrative assistants and secretaries, okay? Permanent old time workers who have a definite job and they're there every day. <clears throat> like in a radio station, guys or girls who do the show every day. Then there's some people who are permanent part-timers and they may only work when people are on vacation or on weekends. And then there's part-time, which are not permanent. They could be like temporary or something, which is temporary casual, which sounds like a dress code, but part-time and temporary, kind of the same, you know, they're part part-timers. And then there's contract people, grant funded positions, special categories, maybe a special assignment, you know, investigative reporters, they want to do things. <laughs> and finally, there's acting appointment people, independent contractors or 1099s. You know, the thing about 1099s is they always say if you're going to be a 1099, you better remember to save money and take out your own taxes. How many raise your hands? Remember to do that. I don't see any hands. That's my point exactly. And then you end up with a bill. If you're lucky, you can get your employer to agree to take out taxes. And then if they don't, and then you get a bill, you stick it to them and, you know, you show them a piece of paper where you said you were. And if they're a stand-up guy or girl, they'll do it. Okay? We move on. This one should be dovetailing with the other one above. Corrective action, you know, discipline. I know it went away, but anyway, employees are expected to meet certain performance standards and behave appropriately at the workplace. Corrective action is communicating with an employee when they're messing up, basically. You know, they have to get called into the office and they say, oh, we're gonna have to write you up. That's the, that's the favorite one, you know, we're gonna write you up, okay? and uh, give you a warning and all those kind of things. And they say, we're gonna coach you up. And say, we're gonna write you up here, all right? And don't you do this again or else we're gonna take points off and we're gonna start docking your pay because these other methods are not successful then you know what happens next, you know? You may get a oral or written warning, suspension without pay. It's like what happens with sports athletes when they mess up a little bit and they wanna slap their hand. That boy, suspension without pay, demotion, and then finally, you're fired or dismissal. We move on. This slide is called personal records. That's right, personnel records. This goes under the heading of, or maybe dovetails with, you know, performance appraisals. They used to say, that your records will follow you everywhere you go in life. Now, I'm not sure that's so much true, especially paper files. But if you stay in the same kind of industry, I could see that happening, you know? Um, it could it, it contain like medical reports, uh, employee progress, wages, you know, salaries, um, attendance records, benefits, training, um, you know, training schedules, sickness, sick days, health stuff. Some of that stuff is borderline cool and not. Okay, service records could even have personal stuff like you're married, you know, school records and stuff. 
Those are personnel records. They may or may not follow you. Ask your employer. Uh, I like the way that thing went with the Venetian blinds right there. That was really cool. Did you like the transitions, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Okay, well, and finally now, this is the last slide. Yes. Um, this whole thing has been about common sense. Common sense is basically thinking before you do. <laughs> My dad used to say, use your noodle. This is a noodle. What's in here is noodle. If you look at a brain, I could see the analogy. Look at, um, let's use a different color here. <laughs> look at this guy here. What's he doing? He's out on a limb of a tree, got a saw, and maybe he's supposed to be pruning the tree there, right? But he's got the saw in the wrong hand. So what do you think is going to happen when he finally gets through that piece of wood? Bye-bye, hmm? <laughs> birdie, right? It looks like he's up pretty high. So he's not using common sense. He's not using his noodle. The bottom line in all these slides that we've been trying to give you, home training. We found out that a lot of these things that used to be taught at the dinner table, maybe since the breakup of the family, you know, a lot of moms and dads aren't together anymore. But back in my day, which was uh, two, two days ago, <laughs> you know, you would learn these things before you went out the door. So now we're coming back and maybe because of the current uh, you know, wave of internet people that have taken over the hearts and minds of families and common sense away, we have to reiterate and reinforce common sense in the workplace. So make sure you apply this common sense and it's not pocket change, it's up here, the noodle, in your daily personal and workplace decisions when confronted, confronted with a fork in the road. Everybody want a fork, but this is a fork in the road. Common sense is defined as good practical sense, the kind of natural intelligence that's believed to be available to all rational human beings, like you and me. Even when you're irrational, you must have common sense to snap back into correct behavior. People who commit crimes, for example, and then post them on social media like Facebook and think they're not gonna get caught, no common sense, because you know what you know the man is watching there. The man is Facebook, too, as we've learned recently. Other people have Facebook, and they will catch you every time. No common sense, and they'll get caught. So when you're faced with a workplace decision, use common sense. It's usually kind of you know what's right and wrong. And if you have any questions, contact me, Naftali Jimmy B, or your staffing agency or a good old grandmother or grandparent or uncle or somebody who's older than you by about 20 years and has been out here a while, okay? So use common sense. Thank you very much for listening. It's been my pleasure to do this home training video for you. Bye-bye. <laughs>